Okay, in my video on complex exponentials, I forgot to tell you something that you'll need to know for this class, something very important. So here's a supplement, adding waves with complex exponentials. So first let's talk about the complex amplitude. Imagine I have some wave traveling down a string or a sound wave in air, and it's a sine wave. So it's represented by the function a sine of omega t plus phi. <coughs> now remember, I can represent that wave as a complex exponential. All right, because right, my definition of complex exponential, I could take my sine wave and s turn it into an exponential and then just say that my real wave is the imaginary part of that, right? So if I define y to be the imaginary part of a e to the i omega t plus phi, that's the same thing as the first line, right? According to Euler's equation down here. All right, so I'm gonna define this function y tilde, which is the thing I take the imaginary part of to get y. That way I don't have to keep writing take the imaginary part of, okay? So I define this thing y tilde, and if I take the imaginary part of that, I get y. But since it's an exponential, I can factor things out. So I can write this as a e to the i omega t times e to the i phi. So I've separated out the e to the i phi part. Now I can combine the a and the e to the phi together to make a complex amplitude because that doesn't change. And then I can write y tilde as just some complex amplitude times e to the i omega t. I've taken all of this amplitude and phase part and stuck it in this complex amplitude, where my complex amplitude is just the amplitude a times e to the i phi. So a tilde is the complex amplitude. It includes the information about the amplitude and about the phase. If I know the complex amplitude of my wave, I can find a. Ah, darn. I put this on the wrong thing. A is just the magnitude of the complex amplitude. And I can find the, ang the phase angle phi by taking the arc tangent of the imaginary part of the complex amplitude over the real part of the complex amplitude. All right, so you can see this utility. I take this thing here, it's got all this stuff, and I can combine the amplitude and the phase into one thing. And then I can go backwards, and I can find the actual amplitude and the phase from that. OK. Now, now that we understand the complex amplitude, let's see how we can use complex exponentials to add two sine waves. So imagine I have two sine waves on a string. All right, so imagine I'm looking at some point on the string and I have a wave going one way with some amplitude and a wave going the other way at some amplitude. So if I look at that particular point on the string, what's happening there is the sum of what both of those waves are doing to that point on the string. Now if I look at that, that looks kind of complicated. But in my mind, I'm saying, well, look, both of these waves have the same frequency. So the sum of them ought to be a wave at that frequency. But it will have some amplitude and some phase shift, and it's not obvious what that amplitude and phase shift will be. All right. For example, if the two waves were the same size of B and C or the same amplitude, but alpha and beta differ by 180 degrees, the two waves will cancel each other out, and I'll get 0. But if alpha and beta are the same, the two waves will add together, and I'll get something which is twice B or twice C. Right? So unless I know exactly what A and B are and what alpha and beta are, I don't know what the amplitude or the phase of the, the net oscillating wave will be. And using trig functions, it can be kind of tricky to find that out. But let's define our complex wave, y tilde. The thing that if I take the imaginary part of it, I get y. All right? So I turn my signs into complex exponentials, and I get my y tilde. Now that I've got complex exponentials, I can manipulate things, right? So I have e to the i omega plus alpha, e to the i omega plus beta. I can separate out the phase shift into a separate term, right? So now it's b e to the i omega times e to the i alpha, and c e to the i omega times e to the i beta, all right? Now I've separated out the phase shifts from the time-dependent part. Let's factor out the time-dependent part, all right? So both of those terms had a time-dependent part. I factor it out, and now I have this e to the i omega t times this thing, b e to the i alpha plus c e to the i beta, that thing is just the complex amplitude, all right? So now my wave is just some complex amplitude times e to the i omega t, and my complex amplitude is this, right? With the complex amplitude, I can find the real amplitude and the, and the phase, right? So now to find the amplitude of the total wave, I just take the magnitude of my complex amplitude. 
How do I find the magnitude? Well, I use Euler's formula. formula. I can find the real and imaginary parts of both of these terms and add them together and get the real and imaginary parts of A tilde. All right? And then I can find the amplitude. Or I can remember, right? So I can remember that the magnitude of A tilde is just going to be the square root of the real part of A tilde squared plus the imaginary part of A tilde squared, right? Or I can remember that the complex amplitude is also the square root of A times its A tilde times its complex conjugate, right? So there you go. Also, if I know the real and imaginary parts of A, I can find the phase angle. Once again, adding these two sine waves together to find out, oh, it's just a sine wave with this amplitude and this phase, that's really hard to do with trig functions with complex exponentials. It was easy.